Hello. Welcome to the Malibu Music Room. I'm John Zampetti. You know, I put together this series because I wanted to expose you to some of the amazing, talented musicians that are coming out of Malibu right now. I feel very much like Malibu is what Liverpool was in the early 60s. Bands are developing here, each with their own unique voice, and then breaking on the national and sometimes even international level. I've been in a unique position because our son Johnny is one of those musicians. And since we have a large music room, his friends tend to come over here to rehearse or maybe just jam after a show. Malibu is in a unique moment in time right now musically, and I wanted to archive it as well as expose it to those of you who don't know what's happening right in your own backyard. So come on in, sit down, and welcome to the Malibu Music Room. Mm, I wonder who that is. Why, it's Swayze. Yeah. So thanks for coming to the show. Of course. And um, you know, just want to ask you, like, growing up in Malibu, uh, you know, your grandmother, of course, is uh, in the business, but you know, it wasn't like a heavy music celebrity family. Right. Um, so what made you decide to? When, when did you first decide that, that was what you wanted to do? Um, I'm not sure. I've always had like a serious love for music, you know, um, and I think I didn't start creating music until about middle school time. Um, at that time, Malibu High School had a recording studio. The Boys and Girls Club of America had one, and uh, there was another one. There was two recording studios in Malibu High School. Mm -hmm. So um, Mr. Bixler, uh, you know, was the head of the head of that class, and um, I had a couple classes where I was actually using Pro Tools and Logic. Wow! So I really like fell in love with creating it and making it, you know. And that was just kind of like my expression at the time because I was doing a lot of sports and all that, but I wanted to be heard a little differently. So I started making music. I think primarily for girls. You know, trying to get girlfriends or whatever. Gee, why would you do that? <laughs> I've never heard that from a musician before. Right? Goodness gracious. I mean, I have to be completely honest. I love music, but yeah, there were some girls that I would write poems for and then I'd turn them into songs. And, yeah. um, you know, and then since since I made my first song, it was over and it's never, looking, never looked back. Yeah. But it's amazing that you're actually able to do Pro Tools because so much of what you do relies on the production as well. You know, most people, they're like learning how to play the piano, not how to wear Pro Tools. Right. That's an interesting uh, it's perspective. True. Well, nowadays, it's so, it's so funny how that is because Pro Tools is like an instrument or yeah. logic. These things where you produce it, I mean, that is turning into an instrument because you like put the music in there and you affect the sounds in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I think it's so important for schools to have like a music program in, in the arts because I know... Uh, if I didn't have it, I don't know what I, where I would have put my energy, you know. Instead, I just put it into the arts, which I think mm -hmm. is so important. In terms of performance, did you feel, did you get inspiration from things like Mask or from seeing bands of the Malibu win? Or what was your, you know, what kind of inspired you? Because you're such a great performer, too. It's not just, oh, a, it's not just a recording situation, too. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I mean, Mask, I mean, when you said that, I just got excited. Like, Mask <laughs> was, like, the best and, like, the most looked forward to thing right. in all of my high school. And like, just want to tell people, it's you know, from Malibu High School, it's kind of their talent show, but it's so much more than a talent show. Oh, right? of course. You, you really yeah. get to showcase it. I mean, you have your celebrity judges. It's like, right. you know, it's like our American Idol. Right, right, it's like right. So yeah, exactly. Big, yeah. You know what I mean? And and also the Malibu Inn, the first show I ever played was at the Malibu Inn. And, and like, you know, um, if if you know, I am very fortunate to be able to like make music and like support myself with music and support my family. And I don't think that would be possible without places like Malibu Inn because that's when I really got inspired, like, wow, I can do this and you know, the local support and people coming to see your shows. It's just like a whole thing, you know. Was the musician scene here supportive? Your fellow musicians, were they supportive? Yeah, one hundred percent, you know, because you know, everyone, it's such a small community, it's like we're all family. You know, like there's Johnny Zambetti, who's in Terraplane Sun. Um, there's Taylor Goldsmith, who I've watched, you know, evolve from Simon Dawes to all the different things he's doing, you know, and the songwriting tip, and Blake Mills. I mean, there's so right. many great musicians. And also, anyone who's doing anything that's like, you know, we have Brody Jenner, we have so many people that are doing things in the arts, and they're really getting out there from the small town. So it's like, it's always like family. It's interesting, because that's really the reason that we have the show. People don't realize, to me, Malibu is like this incredible point in time right now. It's almost right. like 60s Liverpool or something. Totally, totally. Where like all these people are like coming out of here. And I really see the support of people. You know, as you know, some people are just coming through this room. Right. You know, you know, either playing here, sleeping here, <laughs> you know, or just I jamming. slept on this couch more times than I can count. 
And that's the truth. Yeah. And I'm hoping I'll be able to sell it one day. Saying that, <laughs> tell me about, you know, getting the MTV show. How did that come about? Um, you know, uh, at the time, we had just got signed. And getting an MTV show was like everyone's dream, like, I, especially for me as a kid. So even when we were in talks about it, it was so exciting. So um, my first manager, Jordan Schur, and uh, at the time, my partner, Cisco Adler, we kind of just went to MTV and we pitched the concept. Um, and we actually went through a few different like concepts. First, it was like me like doing something else, I don't know, but we scrapped that concept and like made it just about the music and you know the antics of right. of everything we did. And it, it was really good, you know, the, the show was great. I think that we had good music. So no matter yeah. what, like if people didn't like the show, they could go back to the music and, and respect that. And at the end of the day, that was the most important thing, just making good music. But I think like any, ever since kind of like Hard Day's Night, I mean, people kind of want to see right. the antics behind the scenes, you know. 100%. You know. But to me, what was interesting is like you went from, uh, you know, being kind of like, not an extra, but one of the guys on the White Star show on VH1. Right. And then like a couple months later, it was like you were starring your own show. I mean, it was like, that, what, that must have been crazy. No, yeah, definitely. You know, it's just like, uh, uh, you know, you just got to pay your dues kind of thing. And, that, and with the White Star thing, when I met Cisco, I met him. Um, I met him here in Malibu and uh, you know I kind of came to his house and I was like yo I'd love to make music with you because I, I was a fan of his White Star stuff and mm -hmm. just other things he was producing at the time Mickey Avalon, Dirt Nasty, it was a whole movement, a whole scene and uh, he was an intricate part of it so I was like yo let me be you know in the scene and he was like okay cool you know and we actually ended up working together but I you know I started sleeping on the couch I was a guitar tech for White Star just trying to get close to the scene and right. learn as much as I could from those guys yeah, because you're actually in some of the episodes of yeah. the White Star, the VH1 White Star. If you Star look series. closely, you might be able to see me like dash across the, like the screen or something. But well, yeah. we would watch it. Oh, God, there's Aaron. There's. A... <laughs> Those are fun, exciting times for sure. Yeah, Definitely. but then just you know, just have it just then you know it seemed like just a month later. I mean, I don't know it was more time than that. Totally. Suddenly, you you know you had your own, you know you were the star of your own show. Right. right. And what about the whole thing with the Warp Tour? I mean, just that whole thing about being on the Warp Tour. Yeah. And then. The TV show buzzing hit, oh. and like the next day you're on the main stage with Katy Perry. Like, no, yeah, that? no, yeah. It was crazy. It was, it was that, that stuff was happening so fast, and it was like you know, um, I'm a Malibu kid. I'm like a like small town beach boy. Like I, I, I wasn't really concerned about all the things that was going on. I was kind of like just hanging out, and like, but now I look back at it, it was just happening so fast and so huge. You know, Warp Tour was such a big part of. Um, of like the the launch, you know, because like like you said, it was the MTV show, the Warp Tour. The third date on the Warp Tour is when the commercials started playing for the MTV show, and we like already saw a change in our crowd. There was like right. thousands of people coming out to see us, and yeah, like you said, like being able to perform and hang out with Katy Perry and so many different musicians. It's been a blessing, man. Like it's, just, it's so crazy. But you went from like whatever it was like stage six to stage one overnight. It was just <laughs> yeah. like I mean, because Johnny was there with you guys. Yeah. Just was talking about that. Just, this is like. He said, you know, we can't even like, we can't even like go to a Walmart and hang out now. Just the impact of television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's something. It's really something wild. And do you find that, you know, everybody's talking about the way the music business has changed. And it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not really clear to me what the business model is of the new music business. But it seems that a lot of the music is being pushed through television or TV commercials or movies or and it just seemed with you, we really saw that. Do you find that too, or? 100%, you know, I think it's like hard to find ways to get your music out there or even make money with music, even if you're on a major label. So any kind of licensing you can do with movies and television is huge, you know, because mm -hmm. it's just another engine for your music. Um, yeah, and like now with social media as well, the Instagram, the Twitter, like you, you gotta really, I think the model is, is I, don't, I don't think anyone knows what the model is. I think we're trying to refigure it out right, right now, you know, as we go. But, um, but licensing and TV and getting syncs and all that is like something that's been a big intricate part of my career as well. Right. But the, the problem has been, of course, people hear the song in a commercial, but they don't know who the who it is. Right. You know, I mean, with having the TV show, it was there you were. Bam. You know, you and, see the and, face, you see the the lifestyle, and then at the end of the show. You were almost music. like a test case in the sense of you saw how quick, I mean, it seemed to be overnight. Yeah. The show came out, and the next day yeah. it happened. I yeah. mean, it, it, that's how quick yeah. and how powerful TV is. It just suddenly millions of people would have taken you years to tour that much to have that right. many people see you. Right. Well, you know, it's funny, too, because our show, uh, 
lasted four episodes on MTV and they got moved to MTV too. And even still that it didn't get its full eight episodes on MTV. To this day I have people coming to me like about the show. Like I could be like in Idaho. Right, right. Like, oh my goodness, the show, you lost the money and this and it's just it is very wild how T V affects. Yeah. And gets deep in there. A lot of your initial music ran around themes at the beach, summertime, West Coast. Was that unusual for hip hop? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I think you've seen it in hip hop where it's like more fun loving and, you know, they're, they're like the far side that have like a lot of that full, cool, summery right. feel. But um, I think we were definitely doing something cool with the acoustic and like the singing and the rapping and having one white dude and one black guy. I don't right. know, for some reason that was such a big thing, but I was like, there's a black guy and a white guy and they're together. So, I mean, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I think it's kind of like, um, it, you, you hear it more now, for sure. You know, I think at the time it wasn't so much, but now you, you see it a lot. Yeah. What about on the international level, you know, playing other countries and things? What was that? I mean, how did that? Man, you know, um, I just got back from uh, South America with my friend Sky Blue of the group mm -hmm. LMFAO. And that's just so awesome, man. It just really, like, it, it just makes me think about the times that I was just trying to figure out how to write songs in Malibu High School in that little studio. And then now we're, like, able to play, like, in Brazil with people, like, chanting, like, your yeah. name. It's so wild and it's very inspirational, man. But you also get the vibe of like really, you know, people all over the world really are kind of basically the same. I mean, they just want to have a good time. Totally. You know, they, it's everything else. Like these governments are putting stuff on it for their own agendas. But it just seems like you, it's just the fact that people, you go to places where you can't speak the language. Right. I mean, but there's, but you have your own language. Right. And they're into it. Yeah. Music is, is the universal language. That's for sure. Because I'll go to Malibu and see like a 15 year old, 16 year old kid rocking. And yeah, like you said, the same kid in Brazil is just like, he's in Brazil, but he's like still wearing the Ruka shirt and like right, right. living the lifestyle. Yeah, it's amazing, really. Yeah. Because it's really kind of what our biggest export is lifestyle. Right. 100%. You know, people talk about taking down, I don't want to get polluted, but turning down the Berlin Wall. In my mind, Chuck Berry took down the Berlin Wall. Oh, you know, right. you know what I mean? It's like people wanted cheeseburgers, blue jeans, and rock and roll. Right. And that's really, and no matter, you know, what kind of propaganda you had, the kids weren't buying it. They right. wanted a lifestyle. Totally. And I think that, I mean, you even see it in Iran now. Right. I mean, you know, uh, anyway. Uh, no, it's, yeah, it's, that's it, true. I mean, when you go and actually play other countries, right. um, you know. I, I, I have yet to go to like, a, the, like, a, like Iran or something like that. I really want right. to venture. I haven't gotten there yet. But. Yeah. But so far, has, has been Brazil the, the most fun in terms of uh, Brazil, foreign countries? Yeah, Brazil and, um, and Germany, we've had some good times. I actually opened up for Lady Gaga, like, you know, back in 08 in Germany, and that was like pretty crazy. Wow. At a dome. Like, yeah, it was, it was really wild. So I, I have yet to run into Gaga, but me and Gaga were homies when we first came out. Was she wearing her meat suit, her meat dress? I can imagine you would have a little A1 with you. Yeah. Just... Gaga, great performance. Thank you, darling. <laughs> no, it's great. Well done. Yeah, yeah. Not your performance, your dress. <laughs> so fatherhood, the mighty Hendrix. Yes. Oh, man. How old is he now? He's about to be three in November. Wow. It's, it's crazy how time flies. I mean, these three years have been the most hectic three years. I'm raising a kid, got the label, making this music. But like, I think he's like the main inspiration for it all. You know, he's like the thing that keeps me going. On my on my iPhone, he's my screensaver. So I'm always thinking of him no matter what. I'm on my phone a lot, so I see him every second. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, um, but yeah, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a great boy. And it's exciting for me to think about like sports coming up. Like I get oh. to like coach some soccer team. So you know i'm kind of living it all over again through him you know 100 percent. you know um he is something else man he is just the sweetest like child ever and he really like changed i mean 100 percent changed my life you know as a child coming to your life should mm -hmm. but it just got me so focused on just you know what matters which is really him and making sure i can provide for him and mm -hmm. and be the best example i can for him you know so it's crazy and especially now when i'm on tour and i have to come back you know it's it's difficult. That's the only thing that's really difficult is like being away from him for like yeah. three weeks at a time, you know. And I come back and he's like growing a foot and like saying new words, so that's great. I'm going home to see him day after tomorrow, so I'm very mm -hmm. excited. Now, in terms of you know Malibu, growing up in Malibu, you know, how would you feel about raising Hendrix in Malibu? I mean, do you feel there's enough of the old Malibu still here, or what do you think? Um, you know what? I I would still love to raise him here. Mm -hmm. You know, right now we're in New York for a few years, but um, uh, eventually, I think we're gonna we're, we're gonna come back to LA, Malibu. I mean, 
I personally love Malibu because it's such a small town. Yeah. And like, despite what people think of it being like the celebrity like mecca, it's like you know, as we know, it's, it really is a small town. It has that heart and feel, even though there's new things coming in here constantly, which kind of makes me a little nervous. Um, I still think you know, um, I still think it has its soul. Yeah, I think the soul is still here, and yeah. some of these new things seem to be pretty ephemeral. You know, they right. just you know and. Um, but I think that the essence is still here because the people here, people don't realize it really is a small town. Right. You know, it's it's not the million people that are here over Labor Day weekend or exactly. 4th of July. It's the 13,000 that are here all the rest of the time. Right, right. So tell me about what's going on now musically with you. Um, musically, so I just uh, I just released my first solo record, um, my fourth overall record. Um, it's called Shwayze Summer and it's out right now. I'm like super proud of it. Um, yeah, I couldn't be happy with it. You know, it was, I, I got together with a few of my like really favorite producers and friends and we, you know, kind of came up with this and put it together. And um and uh yeah, it's just a good time. Everyone go get it. Shwayze dot com, Shwayze Summer. Yeah, I saw there was a bunch of you did a bunch of duets and things on there. Who yeah. who some of the people you were there? Who, uh yeah, I, I did a a song called uh uh Kick It with a group called Ferrari Snow Day, which is they're based out of New York, they're great. Um, I've been by coastal, so I've been getting a little of the Cali flavor, and right. I got some New York swag on it, which is kind of cool. Um, so, and uh, Devin K, who's actually going to come out here to right, right. and perform a song, he did a song called Miss Fortune 500 with me, um, and, a, and, a, and a friend of mine called Paul Couture, who's a producer yeah. and uh, a singer who I've been helping develop for the last few, couple of years. So. Right, and when I saw him on tour with you yeah, last time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So we have like a little network that we're, you know, it's all feel-good music, really cool people to kick it with. My philosophy is like, if I can't hang with you, and like, you know, I don't respect you as a person, I can't make music. You know, it's not the, it's not one of those things where we're calling up like, hey, I need a song, and I don't know you, let's do it. No, it has to be like a family, and that's why I try to keep it like. Yeah, well, I just, I just wanted to ask you about that in terms of songwriting. I mean, myself personally, I find it difficult to write with other people. I, I'm not somebody who can say, you know, let's go meet at 4 o'clock and we're going to write a song for somebody. <laughs> right. You know, I have to kind of get myself into the mood about something. So in, in your songwriting, I mean, how, what's your method? If, if you have a method or what? how do you feel? It always changes, you know. It could be I could come up with a, a guitar line and I could come up with a, a hook. And then uh, I, I, hang, I show someone, I'm like, yo, look at this. Because I'm really into like... My, my small network of people that I work around, if I come up with something, I run and be like, look at the sick hook I came up with. And they'll be like, oh, that's dope, but it would be cool if you did this. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And maybe, you know, so a lot of times it starts with, I already have a bit and like something worked out and then we come and collaborate and make the be better. Or we sit down with Scratch and make a song from Scratch, which is fun. I, there's no there's no rhyme or reason to the way I make music. But um, as long as I'm having fun, it's an easy process. And that's mm -hmm. what it should always be. Just so super fun and super easy. Yeah, because what I like about your music, it just always really has a flow to it. Oh, cool. Thank you know, you. just it just it just flows. It doesn't, you know, it seems like it it follows a natural progression where it needs to go. Where something I don't I hate music that that sometimes needs to be overthought in the sense right. of people think, you know, I really need to put a major seventh chord here or something, as opposed to what's the song calling for? <laughs> right, you know, I mean, right. I feel like your, your music just it, it really flows each part flows into the next part so what are you gonna play for us um i'm gonna play a couple new songs uh i'm gonna play a song called my chick is one of my favorite songs off of the new album um it's gonna be maybe uh maybe the next single yeah and another song called misfortune uh with my friend Devin k okay who's great. gonna come out here and do some stuff i and, heard my uh, chick the other day getting ready for listening to some of your stuff getting ready for this but i haven't heard misfortune oh uh, misfortune is it misfortune 500 yeah 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 exactly <laughs> it's a great name <laughs> Yeah, so it'll, it'll be fun. I'm, I'm excited to uh, to jam. And you know what? These will be the first time I've ever done uh, one of these songs live in acoustic. So great. This will be an experience for us all. I'm ready. <laughs> do you need us to do a sound check, or do you? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What's up? This is Shwayze, accompanied by Johnny Z and Devin K. This song is called My Chick. Shit. Let's go, ha You should be sleeping in my bed Hanging on to every word that I said Yeah, huh You should be riding like my shotgun Don't need a bad girl cause I know I got one You should be, you should be my chick Oh, ha, ha You should be, you should be my chick 
Yo, uh, you could be my chick and I could be your man. Picture perfect life, baby's hoes in the sand. What would you do with the hundred grand? Should you probably build the school, give it all to the kids? And that's why I dig you, cause you're an individual. Only thing I don't know is, baby, are you single? Baby, are you single? Tell me that you're single. Hey. She like diamonds, so I took her to the diamond lane. She delicate and fly like a paper plane. She know what's on my mind. Yeah, we going to the rock and roll hall of fame. Huh. Hanging on to every word that I said. Yeah. You should be riding like my shotgun. Don't need a bad girl, cause I know I got one. You should be, you should be my chick. Whoa. You should be, you should be my chick, whoa, yeah. We got the whole world in the palm of our hand. Sing a little song just to see you dance. This could be fun, this could be tragic, this could be luck, this could be magic. You're the only one for me, I know, but there's only one thing I need to know. Baby, are you single? Tell me that you're single. Uh, she like diamonds, so I took her to the diamond lane. She delicate and fly like a paper plane. She know what's on my mind. Come on, we going to the rock and roll she hall of fame. In my bed. Uh, yeah, come on, hanging on to every word that I said. Yeah, you should be riding like my shotgun. Don't need a bad girl, cause I know I got one. You should be, you should be my chick. Whoa. You should be, you should be my chick, whoa, yeah, let's go. You should be, you should be, whoa. you should be my chick. You should be, you should be with me, whoa. You should be, you should be, be my chick, whoa. Oh, you should be, you should be with me, whoa. Come on, uh, you should be, you should be, be my chick. Won't you be my girl, pretty baby? Won't you be my girl? Ha, ha. Won't you be my girl, pretty baby? Won't you be my girl? Uh, yeah. You should be my girl, pretty baby. You should be my girl. Uh, yo. You look good with me, rockin' live with Devin K and Johnny Z. Uh, yeah. Let's go. Thanks, y'all. Bam, bam. All right, y'all, here's another song featuring my boy Devin K. This is called Misfortune. If diamonds didn't sparkle, would you want them? If your clothes were cheap, would you still flaunt them? If gold's only sad, would it matter in the palm of your hand? Misfortune, 500. She could buy anything that she wanted. No, no, no. And this love is free. Huh. But she'd rather have the money than I keep on hitting refresh up on your Insta Looking at the same picture And if you post another, best believe I ain't gon' miss it Still thinking about your kissing Reminiscing on our history I should've paid attention In high school during history Cause it's always gon' repeat Like the hookup on this beat Before you love the money I can swear that you love me That life you lead's expensive But my loving is free Anything you want, you'll get it But you'll never feel complete I... If diamonds in the sparkle, would you wanna? Would you wanna? If your clothes were cheap Would you still flaunt on if God's only say What would you do? Would it matter in the palm of your hand? Yeah. Misfortune, 500 She could buy anything that she wanted no, no, no. And this love is free yeah. But she'd rather have money than me Yeah, yeah. Money or the love, or the love She'd rather have the money She chose money me. over love Money or the love, or the love She'd ha. rather have the money She chose than money me. over love Damn, that's really not a good look So many fish in the sea and that money's a good hook If currency was currently about the talent Then we wouldn't have to worry about the commas in my balance But when the label dropped me, all you did was copy Trying to find a new sway 
but he's not me I'll never be second cause seconds way too sloppy when all you did was doubt me I just bounce back like don't know what you got till it's gone hope those shopping sprees are good love divine in the dollar sign I wish you understood that life you need's expensive but my loving is free anything you want you get it but you'll never feel complete I Sparkle, would you wanna? Would you wanna? If your clothes were cheap, would you still flaunt them if gold's only safe? What would you do? Would it matter in the palm of your head? Huh. Miss Fortune, yeah. 500. Huh. She could buy anything that she wanted. Nah, 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 nah. If this love was free, huh. but she'd rather have the money than me. Singing money or the love, or the love. She rather have the money. She chose money over love, money or the love, or the love. She rather have the money. She chose money over love, money or the love, or the love. She chose money over love, money or the love, or the love. What you want? She chose money over love. That was dope. Thank you. Ah, this show was great, man. Thank well, you so much. I knew it would be great, but it was so much more than great. Thank oh, you so much sweet. for coming to the show. Thanks Devin K, man, thank you so thanks much. For me. And for having Johnny Z help you out there. Yeah, thanks, thanks so Johnny much, Z. man. And thanks for coming down. We'll see you next time right. on the thank Music Room. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.